welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-24. Our last episode featured the group entering into the old courtyard of Fitzkeep and squaring off with a pair of death dogs. These foul creatures were no match for the young but experienced adventurers and they were quickly dispatched. We rejoined the group as they began to search the courtyard that is littered in skeletal remains. I found a pouch over here, announced a gleeful Welby O'Toole as he darted around the open courtyard examining skeletal remains. Fargus Stoutheart noticed that Cabe Silvertongue was examining the upper ruins of the castle, but did not appear to notice anything. See something? he inquired to the bard. A look of puzzlement crossed the half-elf's face, and he finally nodded negatively. I... I thought I saw something, but it's probably just imagining things at this point, he said. I'm still not sure how the hell we were going to get out of this globe. The human nodded and looked solemn, realizing that being trapped in a magical globe was something he had never considered when he took his first adventuring steps. He called out to the ladies who were also searching for anything the group could use. The females were gingerly poking around the bodies of the long dead warriors when Lady Irena gave out a shout and hoisted an old leather bag to the others. Crestfallen at the big discovery, Welby asked her what it was. Poking her head into the bag, she called out that there were three sealed vials of fluid inside and a small cache of coins. As Sister Elaine and Welby began to move towards her, Fargus called out as he witnessed a large, cat-like creature emerge from one of the side chambers. His warning was late, and Lady Irena was knocked to the ground by an ebony creature, its claws raking her back. The cleric in the road closed in, but long, flexible tentacles whipped around and smacked both in the face, knocking them over. While Cabe and Fargus closed in on the scene of the attack, Lady Irena cried out in pain as the displacer beast raked her leg with its claws, causing blood to spurt out. As Sister Elaine and Welby regained their footing, the bard and ranger arrived, causing the creature to back away from its new target. Now, he yelled out Fargus, and all four adventurers slashed at the displacer beast, but none seemed to be able to hit its mark as the creature just quickly moved out of range. The three males gave pursuit as the creature effortlessly bounded away from them with its tentacles smacking Fargus in the process, causing him to lose a step. Welby and Cabe split up and sandwiched the beast between them up against a broken wagon. The creature whipped its tentacles around, but the men were wily and managed to evade the swats, but they were unable to land any blows themselves. Sister Elaine crouched near her fallen comrade and gave aid, who recovered quickly through the use of the clerical spell. Fargus had regained his footing and lightly tapped his face, confirming there was no blood Anger boiled over and he charged at the displacer beast as it was distracted with the other two males. Summoning all his might, he launched himself at the creature, who couldn't move due to the wagon obstacle behind it, and it was struck directly in the ribs, causing it to howl in pain. Welby moved in and sliced off a tentacle with a dual dagger attack, and Cabe caused extensive head injury with his two-fisted attack. As the trio dealt mighty blows onto the cat creature, it finally succumbed to its injuries and died against the wagon. The ranger was covered in a black murky muck that they surmised was the creature's blood, but it had no smell. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine crossed the field and rejoined the men to examine the creature. It was the mage that identified it. She explained that the tentacles, along with the innate magical ability, makes it difficult to hit the creature. She pointed out that pinning it against the wagon was an excellent idea. Cabe and Welby looked at each other puzzled, but then admitted that that's exactly how they wanted it to work out. A few moments later, Fargus told everyone to be quiet. 
an audible clicking was heard coming from a chamber nearby opposite of where the displacer beast had been hiding. Moments later, the source of the noise was apparent as a group of eight armed skeletons clad in the remains of old armor exited the chamber and headed for the party. Cabe and Fargus took one end of the wagon using it to block the creatures while Sister Elaine and Welby did the same on the other end. Lady Irena stood between them and used the wagon as a large shield and began to cast magic at the frightful bones. The cadre of skeletons split off to attack the group at each end, but not before Lady Irena had cut the group down by half using her magical spells. As the four remaining undead lined up against a PC, the males quickly discovered that their blades caused little damage going right through the bones. Fargus took a slash across the cheek from one skeleton while he did no damage, as Cabe had similar luck to his forearm. Welby was smashed on the head as he dug two dagger thrusts into the empty ribcage of his opponent. The blow knocked him to his knees, just as Sister Elaine shattered her opponent's skull with her mace. The undead on the ranger and bard slashed at the men again, causing additional wounds, but were then hit by magical ice and froze solid. They were destroyed as both men struck them with the pommels of their weapons. On the opposite side, the rogue's opponent raised its shield again and prepared to finish off the halfling with another strike. As the old wooden item descended, it was knocked askew as the cleric hip-checked the skeleton into the wagon, making the attack miss. Squaring off with the cleric, the remaining undead was no match for the faithful holy woman who shattered its skull with another blow from her mace. Taking a knee, she muttered thankful words to Dilo for giving her the strength to overcome her enemies. Lady Irena picked up an old timber and began to smash the skulls of the skeletons along with Cabe. Once all eight had been suitably destroyed, the group looked for additional foes, but found none. Taking stock of their injuries, they quickly discovered the damage to the bard and ranger were superficial and did not require any healing at this time. Welby cleared the cobwebs out of his own skull and announced that he would be okay, but someone needed the answer the bell in his head. He thanked Sister Elaine for her quick actions, who nodded politely. Well, there's something you don't see every day, remarked Fargus, the ranger. On the contrary, pointed out the mage, I think you would always encounter animated skeletons any time you were trapped in a centuries-old lost keep while encased in a glass globe. Good point, said Fargus. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.